Now there's a whole other story mm -hmm. which has to do with um, tryptophan. And so tryptophan is one of those amino acids that gets clobbered by glyphosate. Mm -hmm. So it's already deficient in your food because the food's been exposed to glyphosate. And then the gut bacteria would be producing tryptophan for you, but they can't do it because they've got glyphosate contamination. And so you have a tryptophan deficiency. And then worse than that, you end up with all these uh, toxic gut bacteria, the pathogens. And so you, your body launches an immune re reaction to them. You send in the macrophages to... Uh, to kill those bacteria. And those macrophages are going to be using dangerous arsenals, so they need to have protection against that. And the protection that they get is actually from tryptophan. They produce something called kynurenine from the tryptophan, and they hoard it. So they gather up all this kynurenine in order to be able to protect themselves from the weapons that they're releasing to kill the bacteria. So, so the tryptonite is that's the small amount that's there is getting sucked up by the by the gut by the macrophages. So by the time you get to the blood, there's very little tryptophan left, and um, tryptophan is the sole precursor to serotonin, and serotonin is a known appetite suppressant. So, you have low tryptophan, low serotonin, high appetite. All right. So, let me see if I got this right, and I think this is amazing information. Um, tryptophan is not produced, it's, it's either the synthesis is interfered with, um, and it's not available to protect the cells of the immune system. Immune systems will grab it, because they're, they're in there in the gut uh, fighting the bacteria, and they will suck the tryptophan They need left. the tryptophan in order to protect their own survival. Yeah, so their they're DNA. hogging it, and they're hogging it, and so the blood gets very little. And when the blood gets very little, then... It's the only way we can get serotonin. Now, I have heard of serotonin. Most yes. people have heard of serotonin, and serotonin is involved with a lot of things. It is. Not just This is appetite. why it branches to other things. Yes, so let's talk about, okay, so we have a problem with serotonin because we're not getting the tryptophan because of the glyphosates getting in the way of the production and whatnot. So now, the first thing we talk about for serotonin is that without a lot of serotonin, we don't have suppression of appetite. So normally serotonin kicks in at a time when you're supposed to stop eating. So like it'll, it'll swell when it's like, okay, I've had two hamburgers, now I'm done. Mm. Or maybe one hamburger. <laughs> and, so, and so without that, the body just keeps eating. Mm. So when they've taken serotonin out of rats' brains, mm -hmm. do they just keep eating? <laughs> I don't know of those experiments, right, but, we'll but they certainly have associated ser low serotonin with obesity. And interestingly, okay. even when those people went on a diet and lost weight, they still had the serotonin. It didn't fix the problem. So the problem is actually not a consequence of being obese. I mean, they were disciplined and they lost weight, mm -hmm. but it didn't solve their low serotonin problem. Mm -hmm. Because that comes from the glyphosate, I presume, you know? Right. All right, so now you've knocked serotonin out of the park. It's, it's there in feeble quantities, what else does serotonin do? <laughs> very good question. <laughs> well, one thing that I find very fascinating is that serotonin, low serotonin, is very definitely correlated with violent behavior. And I believe that it makes glyphosate maybe a contributor to all the, uh, uh, this epidemic that we have in school shootings and the thing that just happened in Boston, you know, that people have such low serotonin that they become irrationally violent and, they, and they're not able to reason you know, about what is the consequences of what I'm doing, and they perform these crazy acts that it seem like, how could anyone do this? And I think it could very well be traced back to the low serotonin that could be caused by the glyphosate. Now, Dr. Sin, if you and I were just giving a presentation together at MIT, and I asked the audience uh, how many people have gotten rid of GMOs, and someone, you know, a lot of people raised their hand, and I said, okay, have you noticed any improvements in health? And a woman said her son was having serious problems. They, they wanted to call him retarded. They wanted him to take, take him out of school. He had all sorts of health problems that were recurring, and he was very aggressive. He had, yeah, he had behavior problems. He was very aggressive. She switched to, she saw the film Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives, which is my film, and it talks about some of these things, not in such great detail. Thank you for this amazing <laughs> discussion. And she said, within a week, his life changed, and within a month, he was a different boy. And they can't, it's hardly recognizable now. And the only change was switching to a completely organic diet to, in order to avoid the GMOs and I guess also the glyphosate, and the whole aggressive behavior disappeared. Now we have animal studies showing, and animal livestock, well, very few studies, there's a couple of them, showing more aggressive, uh, aggressive behavior in rodents. But we have livestock experience with 
cannibalism and, and irritability mm. and, and aggression as reported by veterinarians and farmers mm. when they're eating the Roundup Ready crops. I didn't know that. And that that was completely reversed when wow. they switched to non-GMO crops. Wow. And I have been talking to people, uh, they talk about some of the other brain things, anxiety, depression. Yes. Um, All of those are associated with serotonin are they? deficiency. Anxiety yes. and depression. Yes. Um, and doesn't tryptophan, when you used to take tryptophan, you, you take it in order to calm the system and yes, all that? Yes. Is that in order to produce serotonin? Yes. So that means all this calmness that we're seeking as a society is just being taken away and we end up having all and these... And when depressed people uh, have a low, low serotonin in their diet, they get depressed. I mean, people who have problems with depression, low serotonin will bring it on. I see. So low, in the, low tryptophan in the diet will bring it on. Okay. So then I think that um, this may explain why, you know, you can't... People, like, so interesting, you'll enjoy this. So many farmers and veterinarians use one word consistently to describe their animals after they switch to a non-GMO diet. And they use the same one. They haven't heard anyone else say it. Happier. Happier. <laughs> <laughs> they say the animals word. are happier. And it's like, it's very unscientific. Oh, it's just anecdotal evidence. It's just someone who in relationship to their animal, and who knows what their animals. Yeah. Pet owners know about their animals. Yeah. yeah. The animal's happier, you can tell. You know, even the pigs, you can tell. And these guys just go, they're happier, they're so excited. And um, we, we started you know, asking people about the danger, you know, what's happening with their bodies and their, I was just asking about their health problems, but so many people talked about the mental conditions. Yes. And I went to one doctor's office, she's had 5,000 people taken off of GMOs. She even describes three to five days, there's a change in the mental problems. Wow, that's great. Three to five, I mean, three to seven days, if I remember correctly. And because she happens over and over and over again, so she sees it and it's predictable. And maybe it's the tryptophan yes. link, I the serotonin so. link. I think that would explain it. All right.